Daguerreotypes were direct positive, unique photographs made not on paper, but made on sheets of copper that had been silver plated. The first stage was to make sure the plate was totally clean, free of dust, grease, and highly polished. These devices called buffing boards were used. So you would take the plate and you would rub it vigorously until it was shining and polished like a mirror. The next stage was to make the plate light sensitive. To do this, you used one of these devices called a sensitizing box. Inside here, there are two ceramic dishes. You would place a, a solution of iodide in one, place the polished daguerreotype plate on the surface, remove the glass plate so the, the vapors from the iodine would react with the silver to make a layer of silver iodide. And silver iodide was light sensitive. You would expose it for possibly up to 15 or 20 minutes until it was then ready to place in the camera to make your exposure. You would place the sensitized plate in a plate holder, similar to this. You would place this into the back of your camera and then you would make your exposure. Normally by just removing the lens cap and waiting for the, the necessary length of time. After exposure in the camera, there was no visible image on the plate. It was a, an invisible or latent image. That had to be made visible by exposing it to further chemical treatment. For daguerreotypes, mercury was used. This is a daguerreotype developing box. You would place the exposed plate face down in the top of the box. In the bottom of a box is a tray of mercury. You would place a spirit lamp underneath. It would heat the mercury. The mercury vapor rises and then reacts with the silver on the surface of the plate to create an amalgam which forms the visible daguerreotype image. The next stage, you had to fix the plate to make sure that it didn't continue to darken when it was exposed to light. In order to do that, you filled a tray like this with a solution of sodium thiosulfate, hypo. You would then place the plate in the solution, agitate it, and that would wash away any of the unexposed silver iodide on the surface. When the plate had been fixed to prevent it from darkening further, it was then washed and ready for the last stage, which was known as gilding. This is a gilding stand. You would place the plate on the top, light the spirit lamp to warm the plate, and then you would pour a solution of gold chloride. And as that evaporated with the heat, it would strengthen the image and protect it. It would bring out the image and improve it. Finally, you would remove the plate again, wash it in distilled water, and when it was dry, it was ready to be placed into a protective case, such as this one, for viewing. Whilst it was capable of making good results, it had a, a major drawback. Uh, there were direct one-off positives. If you wanted multiple copies, you either had to photograph the subject again or re-photograph the daguerreotype. As opposed to the daguerreotype, Talbot's process of the negative positive meant that with one negative, you could create as many positive copies as you wished. It was with Talbot's process, the negative positive process of photography, that the future of photography lay. By the early 1860s, hardly anyone was making daguerreotypes any longer. Mm -hmm.